Hello Internet, Winston here. As most of you probably know, one of the first real projects I did on my CNC was my plywood hexnut shooter, the P50 Mark II. As a toy, it was absolutely faultless, except for the shoulder stock, which broke. So before I relegated my nut shooter to a bookshelf somewhere for display, I wanted to remedy its one design flaw. But I didn't want to just bolt on another boring stock and call it a day, I wanted some extra functionality to make it interesting, and of course it still had to be made from plywood. An adjustable shoulder stock seemed like a good place to start, so I sketched up a few designs until I had something I felt could be put together. Here's my thought process going into this project. The most important feature is the center rail. It has to be indexed to allow the stock to lock at various intervals. I could have drilled a series of holes for this purpose, but since I didn't have a quick release pin, this would have been a very slow option and not very, I guess, tactical. My next idea was to use a square tooth profile for a locking mechanism. But the problem with this is that while you do get a strong positive engagement with a reciprocal locking piece, you don't have any sort of self-centering effect. Then I thought about using a sawtooth profile. It would have been easier to engage than the square wave pattern, but it wouldn't have worked for two reasons. Number one, you can't do perfectly sharp corners on a milling machine. And number two, with a pivot below the contact point, both tension and compression on the stock would have caused the locking mechanism to disengage. The solution was to create a wave pattern that reaches a vertical point along its period and with rounded peaks and valleys. With this shape, the stock naturally ratchets back when you pull on it, but it resists compression when you shoulder the slingshot. I fleshed out this design a bit more and turned it into an SVG. Since this was a 2.5D job, I threw everything into MakerCam and punched out some G-code. Just to make the entire process a little more efficient, I arranged multiple instances of each piece in a 12 by 12 canvas. This is the stock size I like to use for my material since it's very easy to buy sheets of plastic or metal in one foot increments. But on a vanilla shape Oko, it's kind of difficult to accommodate something of this size. You have to align one edge of your material with the end of your wasteboard for it to fit within the workspace of your machine. And that makes it a little tricky to secure. I couldn't use my threaded insert array to secure the bottom edge of my stock material, so I improvised a tiny clamp that slotted into the 80-20 base frame of the wasteboard. If the material you're cutting is perfectly flat, this probably won't be necessary, but my plywood had a slight curve in it that clamping at the corners alone didn't fix. Also, just as a PSA for any other CNC noobs like me out there, now's a good time to tune up your Shapeoko or other machine of choice. Make sure your belts or shaft couplers are properly tensioned and that none of your nuts and bolts are coming loose. Your CNC gets hit with a ton of vibrations during normal operations, so you'll want to do a quick checkup by hand at least once a month, if not between every single project. Once everything's cut out, all I had to do was sand down some of the edges and glue the major components together. A couple rubber bands completed the assembly. So, does it work? Let's find out, and while we're at it, let's take things to the limit triple half-inch flat bands per side, the heaviest I dare go on the P50. And just for some extra fun, let's start with a classic human skull analog, a coconut. Alright, so I didn't actually manage to punch a hole through the coconut, but considering I was using ammunition that was half the mass of a Yorg standard 20mm steel ball, I think it was a pretty good performance. 
I've already exceeded the power of most paintball markers, and since hex nuts are metal and not liquid filled, it's probably an order of magnitude more painful, but I wouldn't suggest you try finding that out for yourself. The result of the unsupported plywood test means that this slingshot could probably fracture smaller bones in your hands or wrists, but it would probably have difficulty cracking open a skull in a zombie defense situation. The shoulder stock itself worked really well, and if you want to fix it in place, all you have to do is put a pin through this cutout here. Future improvement ideas for the P50 include an upgrade of the front forks to oak or maple, installing an ambidextrous bolt handle, and mounting a Picatinny rail on top. And that's all I have for today, I want to thank you all very much for watching, and for your bonus clip, I finally got around to trying out my CNC'd Rambone. I only put on a really light band set since this is pine, and I was shooting half inch marbles, but for recreational plinking it seems to work pretty darn well. I'll see you in a couple weeks, internet.